All right, hello everybody. So as you can see, if I uh, if I faint, call nine 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 five. But if I'm just like panting, don't worry, it's just a baby. Um, so I'm gonna talk about data scraping as well. Um, but so this is more like a story. It's a very specific case. Um, how many of you have used Google Trends before? Right. So it's a very useful service where you can see, you know, certain keywords, what's the, how popular something has become or unpopular something has become over time. Um, and then this has been used um, very frequently by academia in their in writing papers and stuff. So, uh, so this project that I was um, that I needed to uh, use this with was for a professor, an economics professor, who wants to do some um, trend research. And then initially, I suggested Google Trends because you know Google Trends is uh, Google has all the data, and then also it provides this handy like download button where it will give you a CSV of the data range that you wanted. Um, easy peasy, right? Um, the problem is, oh yeah, and then better still, they have this uh, NPM module where you can just well, it, it's not really an official API. Um, but it wraps it, it wraps, wraps it for you, and then it does like handles the throttle and stuff. So it's kind of nice. Um, however, the problem is uh, the keyword that the professor wanted is some Chinese keyword, and then if you read Chinese, you're Chinese Chinese. You know what Weiwen is? It's sort of like an official sort of China speak of. Um, maintaining stability, but specifically social stability. Um, so it's a very sort of politically charged word. Um, and then as you know, Google is banned in China. So unless you can get over the great firewall of China, you can't really um, use Google. So the problem is when you set the region to China, way when you can see the, I mean like you can't really see the absolute value here, but the volume is very small. And then the thing is, a professor also needed uh, prefecture level data. So meaning like not just province, like at city level. But here, as you can see, even drilling down to a province, Xinjiang, and you already just don't have any data. So, you know, we can't use Google. Let's turn to Baidu. Like naturally, Baidu has something similar. It's called Baidu Index. And then, and then, Nice enough, Baidu index has prefecture level data. And here I'm showing Xinjiang data where Google just doesn't have any. And then the trend sort of, you know, you expect it to go up. And then after certain events, we look at the data. It looks like reasonably quality data. So we decided to use Baidu trend. Well, yeah, that, that's another. Uh, that's another concern. It's a separate concern, uh, and that's why like the professor actually checked uh, like major events and uh, in certain regions, and they do see a spike in like those keywords. Um, so it's sort of like, but then like to what degree is that is that spike like it maybe it spiked hundred times, but in reality, well in reality it spiked hundred times, but by do only manipulated to like spike ten times. So that's not something that we know, uh, but that's like it shows the trend. That's good enough. So you know, naturally, you go and look for a library, and I actually only discovered this library today. But I, I, and then originally, I'm, I was doing the scraping in Python, like anybody would do, uh, and then, uh, but when you look at the library, first thing you notice, like, it, it depends on Tesseract. I was like. What the hell? Well, why do you, what do you need Tesseract for, right? You're just scraping some data. Tesseract is a good question. It's a anyone knows? Yeah, correct. It's it's an OCR library. So it, it kind of like you give it a picture and it has some text on it, and it'll recognize the text based uh, extract the text from the picture. So yeah. So what the hell, right? Um, so it turns out how Baidu index used to work when I was working on this project is that, um, so you can see this is a trend line, and then you hover over like a data point, it issues a network call and returns the image. <laughs> and that, that whole black box is an image by itself. And so that's what it does. And then so the OCR is for like recognizing the numbers in that image. 
So, <laughs> you know, th th this is where you flip a little table. You're like, all right, uh, what the fuck do I do, right? Um, and then, so, you know, there's an equivalent Python library that does similar things. You use Tesseract, recognize like uh, what it does here. I'm not gonna really let you see, like walk you through the code, but just to highlight, what it does is like use the, uh, this is uh, Selenium code. So you, you sort of like ask Selenium to move the uh, mouse by a little bit. So then they sort of move to the next time point and then they, it triggers the hover and then it triggers the network call. And then look, there's like a time dot sleep. The sleep is there to throttle the frequency so that you don't get your IP band. Um, and then blah, blah, blah. And then you just sort of like uh, find out where that image is. Like find out where that image is. You need to figure out how long that number is so that you can crop up the image, enlarge it, OCR it, and then and then finally get your number. So yes. Yeah, it, are you gonna give the talk or am I gonna give the talk? <laughs> so yeah, that, that's exactly sort of the path that uh, I end up going down for. Um, because you have the graph, so you're sort of like, you wanna do something with the graph. But that's not the exact number, right? Um, so yeah, so like after looking through the code, because it's not really a library form, and also like that mouse movement is not precise, I have to like modify, go into the, the actual script and then look at it, modify it. Um, and then yeah, so you just like die a little inside. And then after all that work, you still have problems where is, you know, data completeness because the mouse movement is not precise. like. I think what Baidu's doing is that it, it jiggles the data points a bit. So if you every time move the same amount, you not necessarily uh, end up hovering over the right point. Um, so I end up getting like about 70% data completeness. Um, and the OCR is also not that accurate. You would think it's easy, right? Because the it, it's just so standard, but you still have one versus seven, four versus nine, all these misrecognized numbers. And the thing is, it's very hard to catch. How do you know if something is off? And then, you know, especially when the digits at, you know, at, at like thousands or tens of thousands and you're off by a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and the image, I, I suppose they're like generated at runtime. So it's very slow, actually. So yeah, that slowness is another problem. So the alternative solution is what Melvin already sort of foreseen. Um, you, um, uh, so here, because the, that, that graph is SVG, so you know, like I grab the SVG, save it, um, and then I still, do OC I still have to do OCR because I need to know the numeric number for the min and max. And then because SVG will give you the sort of like the physical distance and the range, right? So then you estimate by scaling. So you end up getting like sort of an estimated number instead of an exact number. So here is the code. And now we're switch switching to JavaScript. Um, it's very short, about 20 plus lines of code. Um, the idea is that, yeah, the me and max is the actual me and max that you pass in, like of the, that's OCR me and max. Um, and then, yeah, then you just sort of like do, do the calculation offset. And then, yeah, I just did all this math. It's like pretty straightforward math. And then in the end, you get the scaled, um, you sort of get a scaled and estimated Y. Do you, well, we can come back to this if you want. Inverse of D3 dot scale? Wait, I don't know what you're talking. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, like, you sort of like, you're trying to get the numbers from the graph instead of the other way around. Um, so yeah, so the results is that I got 100% data completeness because I have full control over the data. Um, and then the estimated number, so this is uh, based on the check of a single prefecture over the full time range where we are about 1.5% uh, off. And that's totally acceptable for, for academic research pr uh, purposes. And then on the plus side, there's also the script runs much faster. 
because you know like i don't have to make a uh, however many number of uh, network calls to get the images of the numbers uh so yeah so and i got throttled less by baidu as well lessons learned um yeah that was my original title actually language is the uh, language doesn't matter get, getting things done does um uh, tim's like that's propaganda shit <laughs> against javascript i said uh as just like payback time for him giving all those talks in like uh javascript talks in ruby conferences uh so yeah estimate uh because you can't really you know the world's not perfect getting the exact answer can be very tough or you know it's just not worth it when you, when you only have 70 percent of the data and it's not necessarily accurate anyway uh you, you might be better off just doing the estimation um yeah and then web scripting that's like a general rule of thumb that after doing so much scraping is that i find it's always good to just save the html because you will always find some use for it because you're like oh you know like you've extracted all this data and your professor's like i want more data and then you're like do i have to go and visit those websites again no save the html that's that's another thing i don't know if the puppeteer can do oh yeah okay oh no no i mean the original page source in case you need to extract it again yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Selenium gives you the same thing. Um, so, yeah. So, my question for you is: Do you have any handy web scraping tricks you want to share? Or if you have any question for me. Yeah. Uh, actually. That's a very, I think a lot of people try to scrape Baidu data. Um, so if you can see this page, uh, here that's like a, like a screenshot of uh, something on Taobao. Like this is how much people are charging for scraping a keyword off Baidu. So it's like a totally a business out there. Uh, like, cause yeah, people want Baidu's data and they buy doesn't want people to get their data. Um, oh, it's another thing is that today when I checked, Baidu actually updated their their whole um, index thing, and then they no longer do the image thing. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but my, it, it also just means my script doesn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just like they use a. Uh, they use Canvas instead of S SVG, but all the data is already um, shipped to the page. So you can just grab the page and then parse it, and then you can, you're done. Um, who pays someone to scrape for you? All of you guys do it yourself? Someone pays me to scrape. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, at what point do you just get someone to pay someone just to do it for you? I have a bit of an unrelated question to everybody. Did any did any of you ever use Mechanical Turk for any data uh, getting stuff? No. It's banned. <laughs> it's it, it's yeah it's unavailable in many countries yeah. Maybe too much of our jobs are very like manual, so they're trying to protect everybody's jobs. <laughs> since you asked for a trick. And the one I found quite useful is to listen for DOM node inserted, because then you know when the page is changed, ah, when something okay. new has entered the page.
It, yeah, that's the thing. Like the I said, Baidu is fine. Uh, I can deal with it. But like the professor subsequently wanted me to scrape some data off a uh, Google Scholars. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to sit there and solving so solve like captchas and then especially help Google with their machine learning by like identifying cars and fire hydrants. Um, so yeah, I was like asking my friends in Google, be like, hey, can you get us this Google Scholar data and so on and so forth. So it's like Google, I'm like, Baidu's fine. Google's like, uh, scary. I want their data, I want their server to respond. I don't want to smash their server. It's not my objective. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. If there's API, I always want to use the API. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Melvin. So at um, at the company I work at, we have with a lot of banks, as in we maintain bank accounts with many banks, and we have to know what's happening. Like we send money or we receive money, and we have to check the statements and make sure that the money has been sent. So um, some banks uh, have APIs, and that's great, but some banks do not. These are banks that we've actually talked to in real life, and like, we basically have a business deal with them. Like uh, they, we, they are okay business doing what we do, um, and we need to get data from them, like legitimately. It's just that they don't expose an API. So we have quite a lot of scraper integrations for the less technologically advanced banks. Um, and, and it's full of tricky things as well. So with banks, there's this, there's the, this new challenge, which is the OTP token, because it, uh, you have it at login, and then you have to figure out how to like make that persist. And like different banks have different strategies. So yeah, not all scraping is illegit. Sometimes it's really just because they don't have an API, and they're not gonna build one unless you pay them money. And like all you can do is scrape. I think that's how Mint started. Mint.com. Cool. Am I good? Yes. All answers. Just sharing some tips I thought about. Uh, I used before instead of scraping, parsing the H, I will scroll down the page a little bit, trying to figure out whether the website itself does HTTP press calls. The case is you just you send a, it's the same HTTP request call and get back the structured response. So this is something I will do in my beginning stage of by analyzing the scraping target. Yeah, just adding on what you said, but that's true. Sometimes looking for data instead of going to the scrap solution that is long and pay f painful most of the time. Sometimes uh, like I have two examples where the website has uh, like unprotected APIs, sort of hidden, but you can pr pretty much find them quickly. And you just call them, and no security, nothing. You get everything very quickly. 
but it's not for I, I guess it's not for banking data it's more I used it in a, some some sort of font library stuff and the other one was a, like a material database so I guess they don't really mind if people steal everything they have like mm, yeah they give it away anyway like but just one by one all right the, speaking of that um so both baidu and google they they let you do the data requests like without anything and then they give you back results but probably i think google uh, because i most recently work with google google give you about 150 if you're not logged in before they ban you um so you have to like do an ip rotation you have to use a different ip and then if you're logged in i think they, they give you like about 500 before they ban you and then think interesting thing about google is that they don't even rate limit anymore. <laughs> they just give you they just give you the image to solve. So I when I when I do web scraping with Google, I, I don't even rate limit. I like Google do it. And then I mean like they, they sort of slow down the response time over over time. So <laughs> yeah.